that was cool. That's the thing with the weed line fish. You never know if it's a bass or a pike or a walleye. I probably shouldn't boat with this one, but. Yeah, buddy. Oh, we got a mess. Nice little mess, of course. <laughs> Look at that hook set. Look at that hook set. I wish it was like that every single time. Just pitching a jig and a little red tail. Up in green weeds, if you can find green weeds this time of year. The fish are going to start congregating in them as more and more of them die and you start getting fish pushing out deeper out off the edge because the bait fish are pulling out. There's less good weeds, less green weeds, but when you find a patch that's still living, still standing up, still has that canopy and bait around, you find instead of just one or two walleyes, they pile in them and everybody's looking for those deep fish. But you know what? I love having these skinny water ones to myself. gap between my minnow and its face. When I lift up, it goes up there a bit. Ready? Dinner served, baby! <laughs> I love pitching jigs and minnows because you can lean into the fish on the hook set. This is another good one. If it's an under, it's a giant under. Oh, I don't think it's an under though. <laughs> I'm gonna grab this one by hand. Beautiful gold. Oh, that felt so good. Yes. A little tangled up. Look at that gold, baby. Let me get that out of there. Dude, growing up a bass fisherman, I like when you actually get to set the hook hard and ream into those fish. And we're pitching these minnows up on the, the weed line and the water's getting cooler now. It's in the upper 50s. And when you're throwing those big minnows, it's so hard to feel the bite and not set the hook right away. But you gotta just one Mississippi, two, and give them a second till they grab that minnow. And you'll actually feel like the second chomp where they might have it like here. And then all of a sudden it's like a second later you'll feel another donk and that's them adjusting that minnow into their mouth and then lean into them baby i'm throwing the uh elliott rig and jig 74 medium light i've said it before but it's literally my new favorite walleye rod it is so sensitive and smooth i love the handle how it's cut open you can feel absolutely everything and when you have one just chewing on that minnow how, 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 and lean into them and it's just doubled over. No better feeling in the entire world, at all. Especially with braid. There we go, he's munching, he's munching. There's the second chomp. Yeah. So that fish is actually out in 22, 23 feet of water on that outside edge. And that's why, I mean, jigs and minnows have been catching walleyes forever. And they're so versatile. Like the last fish was up in, you know, he's maybe six, seven feet down. You turn around, grab some fish on 2D or down imaging, and you can still plop that thing down in 22 feet of water. So it's just versatile, all around universal fish catcher. 
I'm almost always throwing an eighth ounce VMC hardball jig. Eighth ounce is, is pretty light. Uh, it, it, there's a couple things that you have to kind of take into account for, but the eighth ounce is just a universal for shallow. You can fish it nice and slow over the tops of those weeds. If it's not blowing 20 in white caps, you can still get it down in that 20, 24 foot depth. And you're really just letting a red tail or the minnow do the action and kicking. And I'm kind of slowly lifting whatever, but I want that minnow doing all the work. If I bump up to a quarter ounce, that's when I'm doing a little bit more snappy. Cause some days they want you to pop that jig in a minnow you're not ripping it like a jigging wrap, but pop it about a foot. Let it come up, fall down. Today, it must be because the water temps just dropped 10 degrees, 12 degrees. We're in the upper 50s, and we're just kind of a couple days into the first big cold front. So they're wanting it a little bit more slow, a little bit glidey. That's when I like the eighth ounce. Uh, like most of my setups, run about a seven foot, eight pound fluorocarbon leader. It's as long as I can use. And when I cast, my double uni knot doesn't go into the reel because that impacts your casting distance, right? If that leader's any longer in your uni knot or your whatever your joiner knot is in the reel, it's gonna snag when you're casting. But six pound performance braid suffix for my main line. I usually run 832 on most everything, but I really like having a couple of reels spooled up with that cheaper performance braid in six pound because it has such good casting distance. And when you're using light little jigs, it's not necessarily that I need to cast 100 feet, but be able to be able to cast an eighth ounce jig into the wind, 40 feet, 50 feet, 70 feet if you want, I know I'm getting an extra like 20, 25 feet of distance with that performance braid. But that's a rundown of the setup and can't go wrong with this color here. Any of these lakes where I'm at in central Minnesota, I've got tons of perch, so I like those perchy kind of colors. And walleyes just like chartreuse. Anywhere that a walleye lives, if I'm not throwing this color, I do like playing with some blues and whites and purples and whites in super clear water. And uh, otherwise, a black one. If they're really negative, really fussy, you don't think they like that gaudy thing going past their face, I bust out the all black one with just the little dot for an eye. And those are basically the four colors that I rotate through all year long, spring through fall. Oh, is it the right species? Is it the right species? Dang straight it is. <laughs> we just slid over here onto this uh, other little edge of a flat, little weed flat. Pulled up and popped another one and that one was actually on a sucker minnow. Which, come on, uh, fell off, but the cool thing is you don't have to use red tails. At $21 a dozen, you add tax in there and it's $2 every time you set the hook or cast too hard. So being able to pick up some little sucker minnows for like six bucks and get a dozen and usually they throw in a baker's dozen, is kind of a nice, uh, a nice little change of pace. I'm not saying I don't have red tails in here and I'm not saying that there isn't days where those outfish suckers, cause they do, they're just so lively and squirrely. But specifically, if you're pitching up in the weeds, I catch a ton of fish on little sucker minnows. Like that one. Yes. <laughs> He's all over it. Oh, come on. Oh. He's all over it. Yeah. 
appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> Dude. I love this so much. So the cool thing is pitching jigs and minnows, this bite is literally going to get better and better and better. Now that water temps have dipped into the upper 50s, like that 50 to 55 degrees is my favorite time to throw them. And I mean, once it gets down in that upper 40s, that's when things change. It gets a little bit tougher and you got to start fishing slower. And you can obviously still catch them on a jig and minnow. Oh no, I missed it. Oh, I should have just boat flipped them. You can obviously still catch them on a jig and a minnow all year round. But once it's in the 40s, then I'm kind of doing more of a slow drag and whatever. But for the next couple weeks, pitching jigs and red tails, jigs and suckers up on the edges of those flats. Look for green weeds still. It's uh, it's only gonna get better and better.